Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds and I hope everybody had an awesome Christmas and I hope everybody's going to have a great new year. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've made any videos and I apologize for that as my primary channel, which is a Lego channel for those of you that are not aware, uh, keeps me rather busy. I Plus, including the fact that my job also keeps me busy. But anyway, um, today's video is something that I think a lot of people will find extremely helpful. This is an electrical video. And what this video is specifically for is troubleshooting your outlets in your home when you have an issue. And it's using one simple device, an <laughs> extension cord. Uh, so anyway, if this is something that's interesting to you, stick around because it's coming up. Now, being a homeowner, I'm sure uh, everybody has experienced at least one problem with their electrical system at some point or another. But first, I do want to say one important safety thing. Uh, if you are uncomfortable in any way working with electrical, do not do anything that I'm doing in these videos. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. But anytime you're working on electrical, you should turn it off. And if you're uncomfortable working with electrical devices, please call a professional to get assistance. Now, if you're a homeowner, you have ran into this problem at least once, at least most people have. And what that is, is the issue of one electrical outlet in your house not <laughs> working. And I just want to show you uh, what it is. I have this outlet here is working and this one is not. And just to prove to you that I, this is not trickery, I'm going to take this light and move it over here and plug it in and show you what I mean. Now I have both lights plugged into that outlet and we know it doesn't work, but we do know that that outlet is working. Now the first thing you obviously wanna do is go to your lighting panel and make sure that everything has been reset and is working properly. Now you went to your lighting panel, all the breakers that should be on are on. So the next step that I like to do is I will remove the panel face cover and just to make sure that the breakers are good, because sometimes you will find that it's a breaker that actually went bad. I'm going to physically test and check that I have power to every breaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my neutral or ground bus. It really doesn't matter. In this case, this is my ground bus. Uh, but you can also go to your neutral, just showing you up here. But anyway, I'm going to my ground bus. And now I'm going to test each individual breaker to make sure they are working. And how you do that, again, you have to take your panel face off and then every screw that you have on your breaker, you're gonna put it to it and you're going to turn the power on your fluke. <laughs> you're gonna uh, take your fluke, you're gonna put it to ground and then you're gonna take your other wire and you're gonna put it to the uh, hot or the screw on the breaker. And just to show you, I saved it. I do have 121 volts. And you're gonna to wanna to do that on every breaker because at this point, you're not sure where the problem is. And you're not sure which breaker it is. So like I said, we are just double checking to make sure that every breaker is functioning and working properly. Now, something else real quickly we can check before we move on out to troubleshooting out the branch circuit out in the, the room itself is you can just give all the wires a little tug and make sure that they are going out there um, because you want to make sure that you do have power going to the out or the, the wire. I have found instances in the past where when you're just tugging on them a little bit, you'll find that the wire physically is not in the screw holder and that is the actual problem. But that's not the problem here, so let's move on. Now here's where I want to suggest some tools you may need for troubleshooting your circuit. One of the first ones I love to use is these fluke meters. Um, this is what we refer to as a tick tracer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check to see if I even have, we know this outlet was working. So let's first check to see if we have power on this outlet. And if I can get it to work. As you can see in here, we do have power here. Now let's see if we have power at the outlet that's not working. And look at that, we do have power, but yet the lights still do not come on. Here's where I'm gonna suggest the next tool you wanna use. 
and that is one of these little fluke meters. Now, real quickly, I just want to show you, this is a basic fluke meter. <laughs> it's, I say it's basic, but it's kind of a pricey tool. But to me, this is one of the best meters you're going to get. I love fluke, and they just make some great products. But anyway, um, all this does is it tests voltage, amperage, and resistance. The only thing we're worried about right now, though, is the voltage. But while we're here, I want to take my fluke, and I want to see where we have our power problem at. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, because I know that I have my hot already, so I'm going to shove that into my hot. And that's something else that I do want to describe to you guys. When you're looking at an outlet, and I want to bring this up close so you can see what I mean, you have the three holes. Now you have a large one, a small one, and then a round one. The small one is physically your power. The large one is your neutral, and the round one is your ground. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands what they're looking at when they're physically looking at an outlet. Now, anyway, <clears throat> let's put our fluke meter into this and see what we got. We have one lead in the hot and one lead we're going to take. And I'm going to put it out here. One lead we're going to take and put it into the neutral. Now, I'm showing that I actually kind of have a little continuity there, but I'm only getting 40 volts, which is not a good thing. Now, let's measure it to ground. Now to ground, I have 120. So now what this is telling me is that I lost my neutral on this particular outlet. Now the problem is where do we find and how do we find where we lost that neutral? Now, because we know we have power on this outlet, we just don't have our neutral. What we wanna do is we wanna go back to the breaker panel and we wanna figure out what breaker feeds the power to this. And here's how I'm gonna do that. Because this outlet is not working with a fixture plugged into it, I'm going to take this ticker again, we're going to turn it on, and we're going to plug it into that outlet. And now we're going to go back to our lighting panel. I'm hoping you can still hear that beep like I can. And now it's off. Now as you can see, the power is physically dead to this outlet. Here in just a minute is where that extension cord is going to become our invaluable tool. But first, we want to take our ticker, tick tracer, if you will, this little guy right here, and we're going to go around and see how many outlets we don't have working. I already went and tested, and I found out that it's this outlet, that outlet, and that one over there on the back wall that doesn't have power. Now, because we don't know which end the power is coming in to feed these outlets, even though I already know it's this end because I wired the barn, but in a lot of situations, you're not going to know. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to one outlet on either side of the outlet you're having a problem with, if they are dead on both sides of it anyway. And you're going to take your extension cord and you're going to plug it into one of those. And you're going to bring it back over by the outlet you're having the issue with. Now, keep in mind, you can do this with the power on, but I do have the power off. And here is the other end of the outlet that is plugged into the wall down there. So now we're coming over to this outlet. We're gonna hold the other end of the plug. And again, the power is off. So with the power off, what we're gonna physically do on our meter is we're gonna click it up to continuity, or it also shows you that it is for resistance on this particular meter, but that is the continuity portion of this meter. And here's the cool thing when you're doing the continuity test with this meter is if you hold it together, you'll hear that it makes a little beeping sound to let you know that you have a continuous circuit. So now again, I want to remind you, small is ground, or the round is ground, small is hot, and the large portion is neutral. So now we're going to verify that we have continuous circuitry from this outlet to that outlet. So then we can eliminate that side as being an issue. So let's go into the power side first, and we're going to check the power in here. We have continuity. Now we're going to go into the neutral side of the extension cord, and then we're going to go to the neutral, and we have continuity. Now we're going to go to the ground and the ground, and we have continuity. So we know the problem isn't that way, so let's plug it into the other outlet now. I am now plugged into the other outlet, and that was the outlet that was actually working. But let's come over here and take a look at this outlet again. Now again, I'm going to do the same process I did before. I'm going to go with the little one first because we know we had power from there to here. And I'm going to check our continuity. And we have continuity. 
Now let's go to our neutral. And look at that. We have an open neutral between this outlet and that outlet over there. So now with that particular test using that extension cord, we do know where our problem lies. So now the next step that we have to take is we're going to take the cover plate and the outlet out of that wall. And we're going to take the cover plate and the outlet out of that wall so we can look and see if there's any issues with the wiring. Now I've already removed the cover plate and I used a flathead screwdriver. But when it comes to the outlets themselves, there is no better tool to use to remove your outlet. First of all, get you a very small, low powered screw gun. But the thing that I want to point out is you want to use, and I'm trying to get it in focus, an S1 bit. The S1 bit is a square bit, and that is what you want to use to remove the screws out of that because that will lock into the middle of that screw and make it pull out extremely quickly. Before doing this again, which I already did, always check for power because you do not want to get poked, is what I like to call it, when working with electrical. So now let's get started pulling this outlet apart and simply just take your screw head and just run it right in there. And that's what's nice about it is because that being the screw bit itself, it keeps it from sliding and it allows you to quickly remove it. Now, I already know that the problem's here because right there I had removed the neutral. But a lot of times what you're going to find is that you either have a burned up uh, wire cord, if you will, um, inside of there, or you have a burned up outlet that's not letting the current go through to the next outlet. But that is how we found it. And as you can see, that is exactly where the problem was. Now, just to make sure everything was working properly, I went ahead and turned the power back on after I got everything put together and plugged the lights back in so you can see that the circuit is now working. Now, I just want to point out, you can use this technique to troubleshoot for a bad hot and a bad ground also. This particular example I did, we searched for a bad neutral. But again, you can use it for any of the three. But I do want to point out to everybody, I really, really recommend that you do it with the power off. Even though you can troubleshoot it with the power on as well, I'm just trying to show you that it's safe and easy and nobody's going to get hurt if you're doing it with the power off. And again, if you're uncomfortable working with electricity, please call a professional as I do not want anybody to get hurt in any way. But anyway, that is all for this video. So as always, I hope this helps you with your home projects. I hope this helps you with your home problems because as we all know, calling a tradesman <laughs> is very expensive to come and fix the things in your home. So anyway, as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And hopefully we'll see you soon on Bevan's Builds.